more full-time inspector. And I think as Ross, uh, as staff analyzes uh, the fees to charge and we get a little better handle on how many rental units we have, we'll be able to then figure out uh, if this is going to be self-sustaining. So oh, before you pass the microphone back to Russ, let me ask, Joe, do you have anything you'd like to say? I mean, you, Roger brought you out here tonight, so let's see. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess what I'd like to say is that I think the program is definitely going to be worthwhile from many standpoints from property maintenance standards, um, especially for the overcrowding to get in there and to actually witness this stuff with our own eyes as opposed to going by... Um, hearsay off the streets and things like that, which just doesn't seem to really work too well. Um, we work well with the police department in that regard, and they bring a lot of that to our attention, but uh, I think that's where that would really, really benefit. Thank you. Okay, now, Ross. As John alluded to, with the number of units that we have estimated in town being approximately 600, uh, some of those are in apartment complexes, such as Orchard Lakes, there's 282 units. The Wooddale Apartments has 73. Uh, when you break that down and put it into the separate fee structures, uh, into the fee structures, at $100 for each unit and 20 for multiple unit buildings, $20 for each unit above one, we anticipate the revenues off of that based on our number of units in town to be from 20 to $25,000. If we were to use the fee structure of 240, that would bring, obviously, that would double that. That would bring the revenues from forty to $50,000. I think your number of $20 per additional unit, that's that's a joke. I mean, you open the door and shut it. You know, you, he's going to be walking around each of these units. So if I have Orchard Lakes, if it's, I haven't, haven't been over there, but if it's one, you know, one building, he's got to go in every one of those units. So it, it should be a charge per unit. Now, maybe it shouldn't be the same as a single family house. Well, again, the, they will not be smaller. inspecting every unit. Uh, the way the, the way it is structured here is that not every unit in Orchard Lakes will be inspected every year. Um, it's it's what, it's widely felt that a sampling of the units. But Ross, what you would said was that. that like the the Orchard Lakes, there's 36 per building, right? Uh, there's there's five buildings that have 36 units and two buildings that have 24. Okay, so this, let's take the 36 unit building. Mm -hmm. You're going to have the inspector is going to have to go in and do five random. Okay, so I guess what Marshall's saying now, okay, so $100 for the building, and then, you know, now he's going to have to go into five separate rooms or five separate apartments. So rather than $20 per, and I agree with what, what Alderman Subak is saying, it, maybe that's where that should be higher, okay, uh, because they are going in to go into five separate units, and they're going to inspect them the same way. You know, yes. which is, which, well, and it's not just a, you know, well, look around. I mean, right. I know that's not what Correct. what's done. So maybe that's the area that we need to On, on the fee structure, the fee is per unit. The inspections are not done in every unit, but the fee is per unit. So on a 36-unit building at the $200 and $40 structure, that would be a 36-unit building. The license fee for that building would be $1,600. So if we're inspecting five units in there it's a five times 40 no 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 the the the, uh, the license uh, fee is per unit okay. the oh, number okay. of inspections we do is based on how many units are in the building but take take that i'm sorry dave take that you said it's 36 units yes probably the average rental in there is 700 dollars. so let's look at it from a you said oh so it's a 1600 dollars license sounds expensive but take 36 units times it's probably three dollars per month per unit you know, that's not that high. I mean, I think that, um, and again, you want everybody to sign up for it, but those apartment buildings, we're going to know who those owners are, so they're going to have no choice. You know, to say that, I'm not that keen that they're only going to inspect the sampling. I think they should inspect all the units, quite honestly, and I think that the fee should be, you know, if they're collecting $700 a month rent or maybe $600 a month rent times 36 units times 12 months a year, uh, it's to be three dollars per unit is low, per month. Per, you know. Per month. Yeah. Alderman Winger. Thank you, Alderman Tony. In terms of looking to bring someone on to do this, at budget time when we went through the uh, org charts and we looked at how many people we have now and how many are coming on, 
Are we talking in addition to who we agreed upon at budget time, or is it to fill a slot that's currently open based on what we agreed upon? Yeah. Okay. It, that position is currently budgeted for this year. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Wesley. I agree with Marshall on this one because we do need to check every unit because now that the ordinance passed that they have to have a CO detector in, in every unit, here's a perfect opportunity that we make sure every apartment building has a CO detector in it, every unit. Because going to the new code, the state code that we just passed, ordinance CO detectors must be installed. So here's a perfect opportunity to check for that. And, and then it, the other thing, I would say, and I would sooner go fifty dollars per unit that you inspect. Say you do thirty six, it would be fifty. It would be the, the fee for the the building itself, and then fifty dollars per unit. So okay, so here if we do this, can you? I mean, because can you get back to us with with the new new fees, okay? And just do a separate like the just one page with the fee structure, what you're looking at. Because I think it's important tonight that one thing we do here is we pass this, at least pass this document, okay, tonight and get it to council. So if you could get us that information for, for council so that we can in include the changes. Certainly. Um, you know, if we're all in agreement with that. As well as you what you think an estimated inspector runs these days. Right. Those numbers should be in there. I'm not so convinced you need a clerical person yet. I think that might be an add-on later. Sorry, Roger. I ninety percent, but that one I think you got to wait for. Yeah, it, as I, I've administered this exact program for for five years, and the clerical work is almost double of. Uh, really, it's it's almost as much, if not more, than the than the field inspector work. Okay. So include but the cost. Go, uh, be, all more before you pass this, before we pass this, there's still an issue that's got to be addressed in this one, though. As far as uh, number number I is one inspection yearly for one to five units. We need to find out are they going to do every unit and change this document then, or are we just going to do one in a well, five I, unit building? I mean, before you pass this, you got to make the changes. Okay. Right now, the way I understand it, even with only one full-time inspector, we couldn't do every unit. We would have to have two, so we, would, would you be looking at us recruiting two inspectors to start out with? See, this is why we thought we would start out initially with one. We'd see what the need was, how many other um, rentals we have, and go that way. We were gonna start out that way. But if we, you know, because this will, this will really, I mean, that's gonna be a lot of inspections. I guess. I would leave that up to staff that I don't think it needs to, maybe the ordinance doesn't have to say how many inspections that, you know, if, if the inspector walks into Orchard Lakes and he checks four of them and there's 36 and those four are perfect in the last three years, it's always been okay. You're gonna leave it up to that dis inspector's discretion that he, does, he doesn't have the opportunity to check each one of them and next year he'll check differently. I think leave that up to discretion of the inspector. Well, I think, wait, can, can you write it, to, can you change it? Then what we need to do, then we'll wait, I guess we'll wait and if we can, if you can have this ready for council next week though. Because sure. I think we've waited so long in this and it's like we're so close, you know, we're so close that if we can at least bring it back to, if the count, if this committee's not an objection to it, we could bring it back to council next week then with these with the changes. Alderman Wesley, I see your. Yeah, I. Now I now I'm totally confused because Marshall does change that. You well, see, don't want I, every unit inspected, and that's well, what we're well, no, talking. Well, no, no. See, about. I think here, 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 I think here's the here's the issue as I see it. Okay, if I listen to what staff is telling us, is staff is saying, yeah, they could go out and they could do exactly what you want and what Marshall wants right. as far as inspecting every unit, but that's going to require upfront that we hire two people okay. because one individual is not going to be able to do it. If, if we're gonna hire two people initially, then we've got to raise the rates even higher because in order to pay for this to be 
pay for itself, we'd have to raise those prices even higher, double. So you're talking $480 now as opposed to $240, okay? Um, I think what we should do is first is get the ordinance passed pretty much, pretty much as is, okay, with the changes related to the fee structure, get one inspector in, let that inspector go out, do, you know, base it off of this because, again, when you, when you look, base it off of this, and then after we've done it for six months or for nine months or even a year, and we got a year under our belts, let them come back, let staff come back and say, you know what, we've done it, we've got it under our belts now for one year, we're ready to go out now, we're ready, we wanna do every unit. And now we need that additional body. I think at that point, that gives us all some good input, you know, as far as what's going on. So I would say, you know, now having thought that through and, and said that, I guess I, I wouldn't like to wait till next week. I'd like to make a motion. Okay, Roger. Sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Chairman, but I do want to mention one thing. As in recent past, council has done approving ordinances with any type of uh, associated fee structure. We have deleted the fee from the ordinance and placed it as an appendix to the uh, building said code. We were going to do that, everything. Yeah, and that's, that's what right. I would suggest. And that's a great recommendation because we don't want to fall back on it. So what I would recommend is that we pass this or make a motion to approve the rental residential property as an ordinance, deleting any any thing that's stated in here about fees, but leaving everything else intact with the idea that we will get an amended, you know, with the fee, actual fee structure, amendment for the actual fee structure. Do I have a second? Second the motion. Uh, on the question, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, the next item then we have moving on is the direct rezone of properties in South Oak Avenue and vicinity. Who's handling this one? Ross again. Okay. Um, at one of our recent streets, at the recent street strategic planning session, um, a rezoning of the Oak Avenue, South Oak Avenue area was discussed. Uh, what I'm, what we're basically looking for is direction as if this rezoning is desired by the council, and if so, we will make the appropriate hearings before the zoning board and, and notify the the affected property owners. <coughs> Alderman Subak, uh, Oak Avenue uh, was split. Uh, it's actually split currently, and we've actually had uh, most of the lots on Oak are fall within the R4 zoning. We've had two uh, subdivision come through on properties that are uh, on the east side of Oak Avenue, and uh, what we've seen is a redevelopment along that street where a uh, smaller or marginal uh, house that really wasn't maintained had been uh, torn down and two new houses had been built. Uh, believe me, in a perfect world, every lot in Wooddale is, you know, one acre in size, uh, but there is a, a place and a location for some of these smaller lots. And, you know, these 50-foot lots, even though they're not the perfect thing, uh, the houses really don't look like they're on top of each other. We've actually, that street has kind of been revitalized. And so I commend the council. Obviously, we weren't able to get some photographs. Oh, we got some photographs of uh, what we've, as a council, we've actually done some good things. Uh, there are some of those houses The east side. The east side of the street. This is the west side. That house, that particular house, is on the uh, west side. East side. That east side. On the east side. This house is also on the east side. These are houses that are under construction on the east side, and these are that's a house that's on the west side of, the, of South Oak. That's on that side. Yes. And that was when we did like a two-lot subdivision, a right. three-lot subdivision. Oh, so again, I, I think it's been uh, a, a positive for that neighborhood. My only concern, Ross, is. Your proposed zoning extends this R4 down Maple on uh, Catalpa uh, along Sunnyside. To me, that kind of is an area where, uh, again, I think you'll see long-term redevelopment there, but we're kind of caught in between the R3 zoning and then the R2 zoning of the uh, Villa Cara subdivision, which has been a, a very positive subdivision for that area. I think that if we were to uh, stretch this R4 in that long length there, that 
that to me almost should be left as is for right now and let that fall eventually uh, to R3 zoning because now you kind of have a transition from R3 to R4 to R2, and I, I don't know if that right. meshes that well. I don't know how many of the, the lots in that area meet the R3 zoning. Almost none. Uh, the reason it was done to R2 is that every lot in that area meets the R2 standards. Almost every lot is, uh, all the lots along on Cedar, M Maple, Catalpa, I'm sorry, excluding the houses on the east side of Catalpa are uh, 66 foot lots, but every other one is a 50 foot lot that's uh, 150 foot deep. Um, they meet the R2 <clears throat> standards. It's the only zoning district that they could meet. R4, you mean? I'm sorry, R4. R4. Do any, are any of those houses now con currently on double lots? Because what my one fear is that when you do this, that you now increase the density uh, much more of the housing over there versus keeping some control by requiring them to come in on a variance to build on a 50-foot lot. Doesn't appear. Because you do lose control when you do something like this. Um, I didn't bring my aerial photo with me. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. So, but I do believe that all the houses in that area are single lots, uh, single lots already. The only, again, I, I guess I, I do support it, and I look up there, and it, you know, it, the houses that have been built are an improvement over what was there, but I will caution the uh, committee that uh, when you do this, then you don't have the control of having a developer come in saying, you know, I want to do a two-lot subdivision, and we can kind of say how big are the houses going to be, where are they going to be placed. So I support it. It is in the first ward. As long as, Ross, you can give me some additional documents on that between Maple and Catalpa. Certainly. Okay. Does anybody else have anything else? I have one thing. Alderman Coles? Uh, in this proposal, it said that they, you're able to sell the barricade Elmwood a a Avenue right away between Porter and Windsor. Correct. I was talking to a gentleman that says, why don't you put some curbs in there and pave it and open it up as a, as a street both ways because they do go over everybody's lawn. Right now, it's, it's half paved. Something that we should bring up. It was my understanding that it was uh, barricaded approximately five years ago at the. That was barricaded because of ca a carriage. Uh, uh, on what? No, it's been barricaded. Go ahead, Roger. The, uh, the, the section of Elmwood between uh, Potter and Windsor? Yeah. Yeah, you had mentioned that it was barricaded due to what, uh, Alderman Coles? Carriage uh, development. No, it was done way prior to that, sir. Um, that was done on the recommendation of the then City Services Director, Craig Wright, due to uh, deteriorating conditions of the, of the street. And there were also some problems with people um, parking vehicles long term on there as if it was a driveway. Excuse me, I'm, I got the wrong street. Mm -hmm. I apologize. But that was that the, the neighbors were complaining. Let's, yeah. I don't want to stomp on uh, Craig's history here, but uh, it wasn't like he was going out of his way to be proactive. It was oh, the neighbors no. <laughs> were complaining that, hey, everybody speeds down the street and it's about 12 feet wide and they're cutting in my grass. And, right. You know, so yeah. we said, well, let's barricade it and kind of let's wait to see what we can do. We should have done it as curb and gutter when we did the streets over there, but it fell off the engineering plans. But I, I agree that, I mean, it, it is a right of way. We should evaluate it as a right of way. We have abandoned right of ways and sold them in different areas and, and when they're not being used, as long as the police department uh, says, you know, we don't need it. We still have some issues with traffic over there with the carry subdivision. Those should be evaluated. And if after we come back says, look, this is not really a useful street, we can vacate it at that point. Alderman Winger. So I just want to make sure I'm clear too that by voting on this and by saying yes, let's do this, all it means is that those two it, is that um, area would be saleable, but not that we're planning on selling those two as saleable lots. Correct. 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 Okay. Thank you. Mayor Johnson. Future date, you do go in that direction regarding selling those lots. Wouldn't you want to, at, at minimum, maintain some kind of walking easement? Isn't that used as a pathway to get to the train station? Yes, it is. Isn't that a collector area? 
So in future planning, if you'd provide for that. Again, we haven't decided to sell them yet, so I don't want to uh, get anybody. Uh, and, and all the neighbors would get notice on this rezoning that, and so I'm sure the zoning board will have a, a full house asking questions as to why is this being done? What does this do for my property values? So on and so forth. Okay, so is that it? Then I'd like to make a motion to concur with the memo dated December 8th. It's the proposed rezoning of South Oak Avenue area and with the, with the proposed zoning changes. Do I have a second? Uh, on the question, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is approved. Okay, moving on. Uh, information item, this overcrowding report update. Okay, who gets to do this one? The bad guy. <laughs> okay. And it's your floor. Okay. Uh, one thing I would like to say about this overcrowding at this point in time, most of our overcrowding uh, responses have uh, still been to uh, on, based on a complaint basis, but we've worked uh, very closely with the police department and also with the fire district. And uh, up until this time, most of our overcrowding issues have uh, either come in from complaints or they've been a result uh, of something that was discovered uh, as a result of a response to an emergency situation. And actually a lot of these are rental properties that, that we found. Uh, I think Inspector Johnson has done a great job with these. He's, uh, as you can see on this, quite a few of these that have come in have been uh, unfounded and uh, or the properties are in compliance. Actually, a, a property can have a much higher occupancy than you might think because, again, when we first passed this ordinance, I think we explained it's based on the square footage of the structure. So a two or three bedroom house, if it's got pretty good sized rooms, can actually support quite a few people living in it. I think uh, this is gonna tie in nicely with the rental uh, inspection program because we're gonna be able to access a lot of uh, properties where there may be overcrowding uh, situations that we're currently unaware of. So I don't really have a whole lot to say. I think this update sort of speaks for itself. Uh, I don't know, Joe, do you have any comments you might wanna make on this? I, I think that a lot of people are uh, have a misconception of what overcrowding is. I get a lot of complaints that um, people have more than one family living in a home, and they think that that's overcrowding incident, which that's actually not. It goes by, as John said, square footage and amount of people in there, and a house can hold a lot of people. Um, so I think if people are a little more educated on that, uh, complaints will probably go down. It probably will go up from the standpoint of getting in front of rental units and, and being able to measure these units and, and knowing what an occupancy of the unit can be so we can hold people to that standard. So I think that'll be a, a good advantage also. Does anybody on the council have any questions? Yeah, Alderman Wesley. Hey, there's a couple homes here um, on Bay Street, Ash Central. Um, the basement was being, one was the bedroom was in a basement and that uh, relocated per owner. Have we been back in these houses to make sure that's been done or no? Yeah, for an initial reinspection, we've seen the beds taken out, everything, you know, removed, people removed. So then removed. The, these are closed out pretty much then? Every one of them. Okay. Every so single one of them, it yes. does I mean, I still owner. monitor several, like the one over right. that I worked right. with you right. on. I mean, several of them I worked with, but that 407. Right. I mean, that's, you, you, when you get in and you know these people, you get around town, you know who's the problems. You, they're going to generally still be a problem. You just got to watch and monitor those situations. Yeah, I just, because it says per owner, I didn't know if you went back. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, a lot of information is just per owner. I mean, you know, you'll see a bed in there. You won't see a bed in there. The next week, back who that. knows, okay. you know. Thank so. you. Anybody else? Uh, Marshall, I, I commend staff for keeping to move forward on this because again, uh, when we didn't have this program and, and uh, Bensonville was doing their program uh, with multiple inspectors, you know the, the word that I had received 
uh, working in that community was that people were moving out of Bentsville because they were getting hassled too much on the overcrowding, and they were just moving west, and they'd come into the next community. And the idea is that uh, you, you don't want the situation to get out of control, and so you need to be proactive on it. Uh, I think in the future, if we are seeing that, because um, we do need to regulate it by square footage, but we can regulate what that square footage is. Right now, we took standards off the international code. If we need to tweak that in the future, I think that staff should be ready to come back to us and say, hey, you know what, um, the, the square footage allows for nine people to be in the house, but it's a one bathroom house. And so those things in the future might need to be changed, uh, scaled down if need be, when staff uh, gets a better handle on this. But, you know, from uh, I'm glad to see, even though, you know, sometimes they're unfounded, that the residents are looking out for this because they're looking out for their own property values. And uh, we have, you know, completed quite a few where we've actually fixed the problem. So that's a good sign. Okay. Nothing. Okay, then I'd like to move on. Uh, thank you very much. Good job. I'd like to move on to items to be considered future meetings. We have changes to ZBA procedures. We have the engineering site grade review, top of foundation for subdivision requests involving more than two lots. We have new annexations. Does anybody have anything else they'd like to add? Hearing nothing, then I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion approved. Um, thank you, gentlemen, very much. For the next meeting, I'd like to take five. <coughs> Do me a favor. You're going by the garbage, ain't you? Show that one. Uh, there's a ban on smoking. You can't go outside and smoke. Kiss him, man. I'm doing fine. <laughs> what? So you said your piece, right? Yeah. Well, it's the, it's the truth. It's the truth. If the state wants to move that road, they can move it any place they want. It's a state highway. And all these people who moan it and wrote it? They're really going to be upset at Daniel. And you can't do nothing about it. That's what happened down south, you know, down on 355, when they decided to put in 355, extend it to 80. They just took the land. They, they split up farms and everything. 
They want to they wanna do it, they're going to do it. I hope these people don't realize that. Maybe 10, 15 years from now, and they got the drawings now because we've already made this. We've already made what it looks like. And don't worry, the, the state ain't just. Every meeting we had, there was two IDOT people here. Every meeting we had, there was two IDOT people here. And they saw the same thing as we saw. All right? So what happened? They say, well, we were there. Here's the plans. They got a picture of the plans just like we did. So these people still ain't out of the woods yet. It's out of the woods as far as we're concerned. But if we even say no build, that doesn't mean nothing. If the state of Illinois and IDOT right. decide to do it, we can't say nothing. Even have to vote on right. That's right. He doesn't, he doesn't even care what we vote on. Right. That's right. He's right. He, we don't he have to vote care on what we say. That's right. I think that's what he's saying. Yeah. We don't have to vote on it. You don't need to vote on it at all. I ain't going to any more meetings. Right. What's the use of going? <laughs> if we're not going to do anything, what's the use of wasting my time? Yeah, any aggravation. My time is valuable. Well, before I came, they hadn't decided nothing. They were still talking about a bridge, a tunnel, and all that stuff. I said, you got two things on the, on the thing. Let's vote for either one or the other. You did say that. Yeah. You did. I did that at the, at the, the meeting right here. I got, I got tired. I got...